Hi all. Uh, so welcome back. And now we'll start looking at some uh, hands-on tutorial on how to use the data sets on Hugging Face. Right. So as I was saying in the roadmap two, the first step is always to get access to the data set of interest. Right. And when we are talking about LLMs, there are like thousands of data sets in different formats. Uh, not LLMs, but in general NLP. Right. There are thousands of data sets in different formats. As I was saying, this is CSV, JSON. SQL and so on. And for different tasks, you would have different formats of uh, data sets. Right? So you should be able to access all of them through one single interface. And that's exactly what the data sets module uh, does. Right? It provides you a simple interface to um, download and access any of these uh, varied data sets that are available on the hub. Right? And you can visit the official documentation to know more about the module. And we will cover some of the important uh, stuff about this module, which is more, more like which is things that you are go going to encounter on a regular basis if you are using uh, uh, this module and if you are accessing data sets on Hugging Face. Right. So let's start. So the first step is to import data sets. So let me just uh, do that. Uh, so I'll execute the cell. It's executed. So now we have imported the package. Now let's try to load a data set. So we'll first start with a small data set of uh, movie reviews, uh, which is typically used in supervised learning. Right? This is the typical IMDb movie review kind of a data set, right? And we can visit the hub to search for any of the review data sets, but we already have found this uh, data set, which is the Stanford NLP IMDb uh, data set, right? So we're just going to use that for demonstration purposes. Uh, so now that we know the URL or the unique path of this data set, which is Stanford NLP slash IMDB, we're going to use that to load the data set, right? So, yeah, so we have already downloaded it. So we'll load it from the cache directory and it gets stored in a very efficient format, which uses less memory, right? So let's start with loading it. So from data sets, we will import the load uh, data set uh, uh, package and then uh, function sorry and then in, uh, from uh, uh, that using that we'll pass the string which we had seen right? this is the unique identifier for the data set that we are interested in and then we can just load it into the data set object and now i'm printing it right so let me first execute this again i had executed it just before i started recording so let me just execute again yeah so it's trying to load the data set uh, yeah and as you can see uh, it has come as a dictionary object right and it has three parts to it. It has the training part, the test part, and the unsupervised part, right? And the total number of rows you can see in each of these uh, splits. And you can also see the features. As you can understand, the sentiment analysis data set would have like a text, which is the review, and then a label, which could be positive, negative, neutral, and so on, right? So that's what the features here mean. And you can see that the training data set has 25,000 rows, the test data set has 25,000 rows, and then there's an unsupervised, right, which I think is the unlabeled part, which has 50,000 uh, rows. So these might just be reviews without any label, right? I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is, right? Uh, so this train and test is sort of wrapped up in a data set dict class. It's a dictionary sort of a structure where within that you have the data set objects, right, uh, with the appropriate uh, string or key identifiers of train, test, and unsupervised. Right. So I think yeah, nothing else that I need to talk about here. It looks fairly straightforward. You have uh, imported the function and then you're trying to use that function to load the data set of interest. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead. Now each split, as I said, uh, contains two fields, uh, features and the num rows. Uh, so now you can think of this data set class, right? So we, if I just go back, uh, yeah, you could see that there are objects of the data set class. The train key has an object data set, right, which has features and num rows. And you could think of this data set as a table of 25,000 rows, which has two columns, uh, text and label, right? So you could think of it that way. And now what if we just want the train split, right? So we now, right now we loaded the entire data set, but what if we just want the train split? So what we can do is we can identify since it's a dictionary object you could think of imdb data set as a dictionary and then you're just taking the key passing the key value as train and accessing the data set object associated with that right so that's what you're doing here now let me just execute this so now you can see that only the data set now remember this is no longer the data set dict object but only the data set which was associated with the training uh, with the train uh, key 
uh, is retrieved now and again it has the same features of course that doesn't change it has text and label and now it just has 25,000 rows as opposed to earlier when we had the dictionary object with multiple data sets inside train test and unsupervised right so I feel this is quite intuitive and um, uh, nothing much to uh, for me to say right I'll just mainly these sessions would just be me walking through the code and trying to uh, say a few things about it but the rest is when you go and sort of take these notebooks and execute on your own right? and this as you can see right I mean this is like a two line code and nothing much that I can uh, say or elaborate further on it right okay yeah so it is not a data set dict class as I said uh, now suppose you want to remove the third split which is unsupervised right so we don't want that split because we just want the train and test which has labels and we don't want the unlabeled part now since this is like a dict object we could just remove it by using the pop method so remember the imdb data set was the data set dict object which had the three keys train test and unsupervised unsupervised from that we are popping out the key so let's see now what happens if we print the imdb data set as you would have expected we again get the data set dict uh, object but now it has only two keys train and test because we have removed the uh, unsupervised uh, key of course needless to say all of this is just happening in your uh, local code uh, the original data set of course is not being changed right? so that uh, goes without saying okay now what if you wanted to download a train split alone right because you have downloaded the full data set now you have removed the unsupervised part then you removed you just took out the train part and so on right and all of this of course is uh, memory uh, intensive right? you may not want to do this this is a smaller data set so we may not care about it but if you are really working with a very large data set and you don't even want to incur the cost or the time of downloading the entire train test split and only focus on one split right and perhaps it is more relevant when you don't want the training data because you may have some of your own training data which you have trained the model on and now you just want to evaluate on the test split of a certain standard data set right and in that case it makes sense if you just want to download one split so that you don't incur the cost and time of downloading a huge data because training split might be typically larger right so here i'm showing the other example of just downloading the train split but the same thing applies if you want to just download the test split right and again uh, when i show the code you'll find it to be very intuitive you have again using the load data set method you're passing the unique identifier for the data set that you care about and now you are passing an additional argument which is split equal to train right and you can go back and look at all the arguments that the load data set uh, method has and one of the important things that you would frequently use is just download a specific split and as I said the most uh, common use of this is to just download the test set of a particular standard data set because you may train on one data set and then you may want to show that out of domain or, or it works on uh, all other standard test sets which are there and you may want to download the test sets of all those remaining data sets right. So let's execute this and um, while I'm doing that, think of what would get printed here, right? Yeah, so as you can see, only the train data set has been, uh, the data set object has been fetched now. There is no dictionary now, right? Because it does not have multiple parts. It's you specifically asked to get the train data set. So it's the same as just ac accessing the train uh, part of the original data set and the, hence the same data set object gets printed here which is of course a table containing 25,000 rows and two columns. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now you have downloaded the train split uh, and you may want to further uh, split it into train and validation, right? You might want to use the validation set for your hyperparameter training, uh, hyperparameter tuning, or just for some internal evaluation and not sort of uh, look at the test set because that's the standard practice. You should not just evaluate on the test set at the end and you should not use it while you are training or developing the models or hyperparameter tuning and so on, right? So you may want to create a split from this and just as we do in sklearn, right? So let's see how to do that. Again, very intuitive. You have the train split, which you had downloaded. Now you are going to create a train test split out of this and you are mentioning the test size, right? Which is 20%. So saying that 20% of the data will now be reserved as test set and the remaining will go as train set. Now again, when I print it, I think uh, you can intuitively guess what will get printed. Yeah, I think uh, again, a data set dictionary has been, let me just see if I can do this. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, let me see if I can scroll down, yeah. So again, a dictionary object with two keys, train and test, and you can see that the train part has 20,000 rows, and the test part has the remaining 20%, which is 5,000 rows, right? So again, very, uh, 
uh, straightforward what we are trying to do here download one data set and split it into train and uh, test for your internal validations okay so so far we have looked at downloading a data set from the uh, hugging face hub right an existing data set and as i said there are hundreds of such data sets available on uh, the hugging face repository and then you are trying to do uh, some operations on top of it which is trying to get the train split uh, remove delete some splits and so on right now what if you have a local data set right what if you have created like a simple csv file or a json file which is local it's not really on the hugging face uh, repository and it's some private data set that you have created but nonetheless you want to be able to access it through the data sets uh, package or module uh, so that your code is sort of standardized right uh, it's just the same because you might be using some other data sets which are from hugging face and now your own local data set you would want still want the unified uh, interface that the hugging face data sets module uh, provides right so let's see how to do that uh, and as i said it's in csv format and we have two files train and test in a directory like this which is a data directory and you have the files train and uh, test uh, yeah so now whatever files you have here you could have train valid test and so on but they should have the same number of columns which is features just as we had seen in the previous data set there were two features text and label so the same thing applies here these files cannot have a different format if they have for example the fields are name age salary income salary tax and so on the test file should also have the same fields it cannot have different features right that uh, makes obvious sense um, then we can just load it using the data files uh, so we can just uh, say that uh, create an array where we have put all the data files that we care about so in our case the data files were stored in the data directory so we have data slash train dot csv data slash test dot csv and now we are again going to use the load data set function and specify that the format of the data that we are loading is csv and the files that we want to load are the following data set files right and let's see now what will happen once we execute uh, this cell again very simple simple code right just two lines of code and not much change to the interface right it's still the load data set but now intuitively you are passing it the format and you are giving it the list of files right? i mean what what else can you do right? i mean that's the obvious thing to do so now it is created a single data set dict object and with just the key train because it does not know although you have named the files as train and test but you could have named them as just xyz.csv and abc.csv right so it does not really know that there is a train and test split here so you'll have to explicitly clear that later but right now it has just loaded all the files that you had given as one continuous data set of sort of uh, 25000 rows in all right and this is one format that we have used but you can also load files of other formats like uh, uh, json for example uh, so you can read uh, more about it on uh, what are the formats which are supported by clicking on this link here right and now because the data set has been loaded as like one large table of 25000 rows you may want to now create the train sp uh, test splits right so you can now load the train part of which uh, which is the f uh, everything uh, so you'll first split it and say that uh, the test set size should be 20%. So the last 5,000 rows will go away as test set and the first 20,000 rows will remain as the training set and then you can load that uh, training set over here. Right? Um, <clears throat> so right now what you have done is you have had a local data set and you have loaded it. But now this local data set, data set you have created in the standard in a, like a simple CSV format and if it's a small data set you really don't worry much about how much space it is occupying and so on but if it's a larger data set you may have that concern right so you might want to optimize the amount of space it takes by converting it to the pi arrow format which uses less memory and then save it to the disk again right so you're loading your own data set changing the format which is more memory efficient and then saving it to the disk right this is again like a common uh, use case that you might want to do because now if you want to share this data set you can share it in this format right so you're going to take the train test splits and save to disk in this uh, format right and now remember the train test splits are going to be a dictionary object where you have the train split and the test split it's again right instead of just the train split that you see above right so let's execute oh i didn't execute the previous cell i think let me just do that first yeah so I'll execute this this is done and now i can execute this one oops yeah it's executed and the data set has been 
uh, saved right to the local disk and now you can load it from this directory uh, in the uh, where it's stored in the pyro format yeah so this is what it looks like it creates this folder which has subfolders one first for for the train split then the test split then it has the files uh, some metadata stored and so on right okay so this is what about loading the local data set and then storing it efficiently also we have seen one format which is csv but as i said there are other formats which are supported by the load data set uh, function yeah and now once we have stored it from the disk uh, we can now load it back from that efficient storage so you can use load from disk let me execute this now you're going to load from the disk and as seen you can get the train and test splits remember you had so saved the data after creating the train test splits so now the train and test splits are visible when you're loading the data back back from the uh, disk mm -hmm.